All right, back at the shop, ready to pull the motor. And I got the bibbies on this time. And why do I have the bibbies on, kids? Because crack, crack is, is whack. whack. That's right, crack is whack. Say no to gratuitous ass crack. That's right, it's Dale time again. I know I've been putting this off and um, it's time. The hood is open and the 18RC, it doesn't want to be in here anymore. Once I start this process of pulling this motor out, then there is no more driving. Not that there's been any driving really for the past month or so. Because the roads are crap, the it's weather, it's cold, the tires are meant for warmer weather, and this motor doesn't want to start now. So I thought I should probably troubleshoot that motor and figure out why it's not starting, And uh, but I think it's probably electrical, maybe the coil, maybe something else. I haven't even checked spark, and I don't care. It's coming out. It still rotates. It's fine. You know? It's just missing something. Uh, the air fuel or the spark, one of the three. Not fuel, because I can smell that. Not air, because there's lots of air everywhere. And spark, maybe. My coil is desperately old. So I've got an MSD6A that's going in with the 18RG. I don't really care. So let's, you know, get in there and see what's what. The first thing is always first, and this is it. The hood must come off. <laughs> take a time-lapse break to explain the stupidity two by four stool bracing pointy nose of literally priceless hood cannot replace this hood I got one shot at this if I drop this thing and I bend a corner or whatnot I'm gonna have to hope and pray that it's not where that pain is so why am I still doing it as I've explained before I'm an idiot Now, if that isn't rich, compelling content for you, the internet viewer, I don't know what is. Are you not entertained? You aren't. Now, that is not just any guitar stand. That is Shadowfax, lord of all multiple guitar stands. And he has been my friend through many a hood-holding adventure. He's padded, you see. So he holds the hood real good. That was Harry. And I put myself there for no reason at all. I have helpers, I could have someone help me, but you know what? I wanted to get something done today. So now it's done. That's it. I don't know why I can't just do things. Sometimes I just wanna do things, you know? Just let me do them. One thing I can just do is take my hardware and put it back where it belongs in the hood. Because if I don't, um, I'll lose it all. I'll just go down here a minute. This is, again, very compelling video. You want to watch this. You can't not watch it. And the algorithm likes it too, you know? Lord of mercy, yes, we got to please that algorithm. Well, I'm into it now. This bothers me, uh, but I knew it was gonna be this way. I knew, uh, I've been here before with my other Celica, so. It won't be too bad, but those bolts getting that battery tray off are going to be stuck as a duck in the muck. So we're not going to get those off easy. Bolts on the radiator, not going to come off easy. The fan tray, everything's just done, rusted, done. I think that's going to be all for now until I can come back and, you know, juice it up. <sighs> you know? That's right. The boys are 
the back. Come to think of it, I don't know what boys are talking about. Or where they're re returning to. But guess who just got back today? Them white eyed boys who had been away. Haven't changed, haven't much to say. Man, I still think those cats are great. They was asking if you were around, how you was and where you could be found. I told them you were living downtown, driving all the old men crazy. I said, the boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. I said, the boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. And the boys are back in town. Well, I think that concludes all of the stuff that was connected up here in the engine bay. We had heater hoses connected to the motor. We had, of course, the coolant hoses. They're off now as well. All the wiring, the throttle linkage, the clutch slave cylinder, which was only connected with one bolt. Pretty awesome. Um, and then, of course, the fuel lines and the remaining electrical wiring going from the distributor to the coil. Uh, all of that is unhooked up top here. So now I think I'll head underneath the car and deal with the exhaust clamp and start taking a look at the drive shaft. Uh, again, I don't want to drain all the fluid out of the transmission just yet. I just want to maybe take off the cross member for the transmission and support the transmission with a jack stand and um, and do whatever other work I can do under there uh, prior to pulling the motor out. I'm pretty sure if we went yanking on the motor that the drive shaft would just come out the back end of the motor, but then it would spill the gear oil all over while we're trying to pull the motor out. So I'd rather do that prior to pulling it out. I realized that this speedo gear had to come out and then I realized that it was gonna drain gear oil. And, of course, my setup is not right for receiving the gear oil, but I've got a pan under it, so it's now using. The exhaust is, you know, uncoupled, but not necessarily unhooked yet. It will be, though, when we give it a yank and we pull the motor out. Still haven't decided I'm probably going to take the header and the, and the intake off, um, just because it's easier that way. I think that's probably going to do it for today and when i come back tomorrow i'll deal with the drive shaft and the front end of the car getting that all off and then on thursday we'll yoink this sucker out of here headed to the shop once again day three of the engine teardown now when i say day i mean like an hour and a half to two hours in the morning in any case, big news today. We crossed over the 500 subscriber mark. Thank you to each and every one of you who are tuning in right now. It means everything. Like, you have no idea. Uh, we're on this road to trying to make this more of a full-time thing. We don't know where it could take us, but without you, the subscribers, we can't go much further at all. So thanks for subscribing. Thanks for always watching. Do me a favor. If you're already are subscribed, go ahead and click the bell up in the upper right to so you get notifications on your phone about whenever we post a new video or a short. And if you aren't subscribed, which, you know, like 80% of the people who watch our videos aren't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Like there are return viewers who watch more than one of our videos who are not subscribed. That means you ought to subscribe. And that way, when you're watching YouTube on your TV or, you know, wherever else you might be watching it besides your phone, you'll see the recommendations for our new videos. So, you know, keep, keep in touch. We're going to be racing all season. And racing all season means that we're going to be working on cars all season. So the general flow of things, build or rebuild, race, break, and repeat over and over all season. So that's the plan. So if you want to keep up with what we're doing in 2024 in the racing season in Dale, in the MGB GTS, in the 
RX AW11 Senior Dos in Keegan's miniature cells in Richard's Starlet, the Killer Corolla, the RX FX that might make an appearance later on this season. We've got a lot of vehicles already in the fleet that are going to be racing this season. There's always more on the way. We're going to buy more junk <laughs> and fix it up. Um, but you know, stay tuned, stay subscribed, and thank you very much for getting us to this point. Now we're just waiting for YouTube to send us that. I think it's a. Uh, a uh, rusty tin can play button that you get for 500 subscribers. I I mean at least it ought to be something. So I'm I'll be waiting. I'll be waiting very patiently for that hobo play button to arrive in the mail. On the schedule for today, radiator comes out, radiator core support comes out, grill, bumper all coming out so the motor can slide out freely. I'm kind of worried about the lip spoiler, but I think it may be able to stay and we'll pick the motor up over top of it. Just make sure that we don't crack it at all. And here we're pulling out the carb intake manifold and exhaust manifold. And then under the car, we're going to do the drive shaft and take it off at the rear end and then pull it out of the transmission. And then inside the car, we're going to get that stick out of there so that the transmission can slide out freely. So that's what we're doing today. Nothing to do now, but, you know, get busy. Whack! plan between yesterday and today the plan that i will relay to you now if i was going to refinish the whole bay which i do want to do i would strip off the headlights and the hood hinges and all of that stuff and uh, make it go but i'm going to save that for later because even though this is going to be more work it could be worth it in the end i think what i'm going to do is pull this motor out put the new motor in without refinishing the bay at all. Make the new motor run, maybe not with coolant in it or whatnot, just to know that it's going to run. And then once it runs, maybe we, maybe we hook up the radiator. I don't know. I just don't want to go way all the way back into it and then have to tear it all the way back down. It all depends on time. If we're already pressed on time by the time I get it running, because there's a lot of stuff to buy and a lot of things to get straight before it's going to run. We get it running within plenty of time and we're not pressed for time, then I will tear the motor back out, refinish the bay, make everything very pretty, and then put the motor back in again and it'll be good to go. If we are pressed for time and we're not going to be able to race this car this season, if I tear the motor out and refinish the bay, then I'm not going to do it. It's going to remain looking just like this with the new motor in it. And that's fine with me. I do not care as long as it goes faster. That's what this is really all about. So what you can see I have done here, just what I explained, radiators out, radiator core support is out. Bumper had to come off in order to be able to get to uh, something. I don't remember what, but you know, it's in the way of the motor coming out. And then I got the tin off in the middle so I could get the vertical piece of the radiator core support off and now we got this nice big sweepy hole here to be able to pluck this sucker up and out of here so um i think the next steps going to be right here on the manifold and we'll come in a little bit closer so you can see that work happening but i'm going to take off the carburetor intake and the exhaust manifold to make sliding this thing out that much easier yeah i just reviewed that uh last footage and uh You'll pardon me for a moment. I just got to, you know, loosen her up and tuck this shirt in proper because nobody really needs to see as much as you've seen. 
Don't go back and look again to try to find it. I may take care of that. You may not find it. <laughs> All right, well, this will make my mother happy at least. Tucked in the shirt. Huh? Yeah. Much better. Much better. It'll all come out again, but let's get those manifolds off. I'll be your number one with a bullet. A little god complex, cock it and pull it. We're going down, 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 down. <laughs> one piece, baby. I mean, it wasn't pretty, but it's done. I figure while I'm at it, I may as well go ahead and remove the old electro digital voltage thingy. Alternator, that's what we call it. Where did I put that 13 that I had to use before on not OE hardware? Here it is. Forgot what I was doing there for a second. I have two problems. Two big problems in my life right now. Ah, the two big problems are this. One, I need another set of tools. I'll come down here. Yeah, pointed. Two sets of tools in two locations is what I have right now. And they keep getting moved back and forth and I end up missing one in one place. So I need another set of tools that is one of those all together units that, you know, has a place for everything and you put everything back in it. And then it say Boxo sells one. Uh, there's a couple of other companies. You know, if anybody sees this and wants to maybe sponsor me with one of those. I know we're really burning up the charts with our 500 subscribers and whatnot, and that makes for solid sponsorship. But you know, how about giving the little guys a break? Huh? The big guys, yeah, they get millions of views. They don't need your tools. I need them. I can use them. That's all I'm saying. So we're going under the car. Yoking it. No. Pinone? I have no puns or anything today. We got to take the drive shaft off the pinion and slide the drive shaft out from under the car. I'm totally spaced it. I have one other big problem with this property coming, having two separate properties and having a shop and coming to the shop. And besides the tools that I complained about and I would really like, the other one is I have no bathroom here. We might have to remedy that at some point with a little um, homemade urinal action that might just drain outside. I'm, I'm not above it. Quick inspection here. That's a, that's just a bolt that goes into the threads on the pinion. And that's a, is it a 12 millimeter? 13 millimeter, a half inch? I don't know. Whatever it is, I'm probably not going to have it. Maybe it is the 12. It is the 12. I have locked the parking brake. Oh, there she goes. Well, that was easier than I thought it was going to be. This uh, drive shaft was custom made to made up to this Ford 88 rear end. Oh boy, this one is, this one needs a different push. All this was installed, fabricated, put together down at Gary Rod and Chassis in Ava, Missouri. Thomas Gary built, has built many Acelicas, V8, Beams, all sorts of swaps, has done this rear end conversion quite a number of times. He was the guy. There's a video about it if you want to go back and watch that. I didn't really cover his work because he just did the work and I wasn't there to film it. But you can witness me picking it up and see the other cool things in his shop. Okay, that's three of them just loosened. Good. Okay. They're all loose. Pull them loose. There it is. Oh man, it's so light. Ha! Awesome. All right, we're about to drain the rest of the fluid out of the transmission, so I'm going to move a pan. Okay, let's see if this drive shaft comes out as easy as I think it will. Oh yeah, it's slipping right out. Oh my god, this drive shaft is so light, you guys. Yeah. You know what I like? Now, I know that the shop that made the drive shaft did this. But, and it actually is spelled wrong, which is even funnier. 
It's spelled wrong and it's upside down, but it says Gary, as in Gary Rod and Chassis. That's who requested that the drive shaft be made, and so it shall. I say that that thing weighs no more than 12 pounds. <laughs> it is awesome. Really cool. One piece, no more U joint in the middle, just a single solid drive shaft. It's off now, and that means everything forward of here is disconnected and ready to slide out. While that drains, we'll go inside the car and take out the stick shift, which is not a small task, but we'll get it done. And all that took entirely too long, especially this clip for the air fuel ratio meter. I say clip, I mean the plug, but the clip on the end of the plug was stuck down in there. I couldn't get it out. Anyway, it's out now, sticks out, and now the transmission will be able to slide out free. That's going to do it for the day. That's got to do it for the day. Because I'm beat. I've only spent a couple hours here, and this, one, this beat me up today. Tomorrow's the big day, though. Uh, so let's review here real quick. Radiator, gone. Core support, gone. Manifolds, gone. Drive shaft, disconnected. And stick, out of the transmission. Engine, ready to pull. Ooh, one more thing for today. I lied, we're not done. What we don't have on this motor is any sort of hooks to be able to pick it up by and pull it out of here. So I have those on the other motor. We'll just have to transplant them onto here for now. And then uh, that'll be ready. And then I think I'm gonna clean up this mess and that'll be the day. All right, back at the shop, ready to pull the motor. And I got the bibbies on this time. Hmm? And why do I have the bibbies on, kids? Because crack is whack. That's right, crack is whack. Say no to gratuitous ass crack. Uh, Miles is down here attempting to remove the hardware for the uh, spoiler. But once again, I don't have any of the tools that I need over here. So we're doing it with whatever tools that we can find. And I, I thought, ah, it'd be really cool and put in nice Allen-headed stuff to hold that in. And of course, we don't have Allens over here or, you know, anything we need. My uh, fancy fasteners on the corners. Easy removal tool. There, we have that tool, at least. Oh, uh, no, there's an actual fastener there. Great. And it's another Allen head with a, uh, maybe a 12 millimeter bolt behind it. Are you down low there doing it? I guess, man, I did more connections than I thought I did. I'm shocked. It's, it's surprisingly secured to the vehicle. Did I zip tie this one? No, it also has a... It has a nut in it, a bolt and a nut. Uh huh. And it's not an Allen. I guess I only zip tied one. I feel I remember. I feel like I remember bragging about that. Like I only used one zip tie on the whole thing. Is that the last one? Yeah. There's there's one up top on this side that you ain't got yet. I'll talk about what I think we're gonna do here. Uh, we're going to hook up the crane. We're going to unloosen the bolts once the bolts are out. Uh, we'll take the slack up with the crane. And then once the bolts are out from the motor mounts, then it should start to lift up in the air. And then we should be able to hoist it out of there. Driving it back um, through this hole is going to be a little bit difficult, especially with a camera right there. Next question is, where does it go? And... Can't really go in front of that one, because, uh, you know, that one. I think I'll put it over here. That's fun. Just go ahead and rattle the table around with the priceless head and cams on it. Nylock nuts on eight-mile-long bolts. Good times. Ooh, yeah. There. <laughs> there. Much more sturdy and normal than a Hudson. It just stays there. 
non-shaky stability, etc. Well, this is thrilling video so far, you know. Remove <laughs> removal of the spoiler. Look at it, beautiful. Thank you, sir. All right. So let's get the chain on. Let me just drag that across the paint. It doesn't matter if it's straight up and down. It's all right. Okay. Just hammer it and go. The stud's probably going to turn in there. But is that good? Yeah. Good all right, cool. It'll probably, as we pick it up, it'll probably yeah bend backwards some. Yeah. That one's moving too. Do that. Yeah. yeah, I know. I just wanted to make sure that it was going to pick it up in the right orientation. So, the wires are all out of the way. I mean, I, I'm pretty certain it's good to go, but we'll find something. Yeah. We'll find something. This is going to be super annoying. <clears throat> and it's just in the wrong place. That's fine. Well, didn't need it after all. Oh, yeah. yeah I did not drain the oil. Uh, except for what's drained out of the oil pan uh, from the edges of it. Let's see if I can get these. They felt like it would go by hand, but of course it won't. Fell victim to the classic blunder. First of which is never get involved in a land war in Asia. And the second is if it feels hand tight, it's not hand tight. One whole day later. Okay, to the other side. 15? 15 or 16 no, no, nothing's a 16. Okay, fifteen. Nobody's ever used a 16 in the history of man. Watch that priceless sensor down there. That one that I keep the one on? that you keep banging into, yeah? Everything on this car is priceless. <laughs> you try to find another one. Everything has a value on these cars. You don't want to break anything if you can't if you can help it, even if they're old rusty, crusty sensors or whatnot. Somebody probably needs it. So whoever I sell this motor to, they're they're probably gonna need that sensor. Maybe I need it for the motor that's going in. I don't know. Oh, he's done it. One. one of them, anyway. All right, trade jobs there. He wants to do something. Let him do something. Keep going. Nice. Nice. Should be able to keep it on there. Oh, yeah. She's coming loose. That whole motor's rocking every time you turn it now. Oh, yeah. There she comes. I feel real good about this. Yeah. You're in a nice, safe, secure position. You're, you're going to be just fine. Okay. Here it comes. Hey, come on, then. Come on, then. Come on, then. Oh, my God. The threads on that sucker. Uh, no, no, no! It's stuck. Why is it stuck? Why is it stuck? Yeah, see. All right, ready to go. Well, I mean, we could use the put 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 put, but it makes a whole bunch of noise and whatnot. So we'll just jack her up. We'll just jack it up the way God intended. Here she comes. Oh, yeah, you're taking back up a little bit, aren't you? Trans is coming out with it. That is correct. All right, how close are we back there? Uh, pretty. Uh, pretty Real close? Mm, yeah. I can bring it forward plenty, though. Okay, you're good. Bring her out a little. It's dragging on something. Might the oil pan? So, up. Uh, no, not the oil pan, the transmission, bell housing. Mm -mm. It's the bell housing on the steering rod that I did not remove, that I probably should have removed. Okay, here we go. <sighs> nope, she's stuck. The jack stand that's holding up the transmission. Oh, that's not good. No, that's very much not good. It's very loose in there, and it's peeing transmission fluid. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. a lot of it. Trying to trying to figure out what to do right now. <laughs> it's heavy. <clears throat> Things are gonna get weird here. Okay. Right. Yay. Okay, all right, that should make things a little easier. <laughs> oh, man. What's the point of getting clean? You wear the same old dirty jeans. What's the point of being seen? These eyes are cruel, those eyes are mean. What's the point of human beings? A sharpie face on tangerines. Why is it felt like Halloween?
wasn't supposed to be this hot. The house is on Mulholland Drive, the car's on Sunset Boulevard. I wish it'd come down a little slower. I think that'll do it. Hey, -o. nice and solid. Look at that. She ain't going nowhere. All right. Whew. That was Harry as the Hendersons or something. Harry as the Hendersons? I don't know. Okay, well, what are we left with then, if that's the end? Well, we're left with a big hole. And it doesn't look too worse for wear, I mean, except for what we did to the steering arm there, but you know, she'll still steer, probably. So we have a big hole here, and we have two motors over here, the, you know, old unit and the new shiny 18RG. So the plan, that you should stick around for, put that motor in here with it looking just like this. Well, you know, looks just like the way it does and we're gonna make it run. And if that happens quickly, excellent. We'll pull it back out of there and then we'll clean all that up and make it look pretty. If it doesn't happen quickly, then this is how it's gonna look this season. Don't care. But you know what, when I pull it out next season to do the, uh, to do the engine bay and whatnot, I'll probably drain all the fluids first. I'll probably do that. All right, well, next time you see Dale, there'll be an 18RG going in the hole, and hopefully it'll be going click, click, fire, fire, sputter, sputter, et cetera. But that's a long way off, a um, lot, of, lot of hours between now and then. So, um, but yeah, that's, uh, you know, roll the beautiful time-lapse footage, I guess. We'll see you next time. Sometimes I just like to be away from people. I don't want people to see me. And this seems like a pretty good place to hide. Except, you know, look at Children came in. They'd probably still be able to find me. I guess we'll see.